is story time and I got Mickey and I got Minnie with me and we're going to have a good story about love. So pull on up a, a chair, come on back and, and see me sometime and I've got lots of good videos all about love. So uh, now is the time for love to flow like it's never ever flowed and Mickey and Minnie, they, they like it. I hope you do too. So may faith come from faith for the obedient and wisdom for our living wisdom as his salvation shines forth from that eternal father for everyone keeping their love alive absolutely everyone because his kingdom age covenant has been given according to prophecy according in accordance with matthew 24 22 in accordance with the words of john 10 16 in accordance with God pouring out his spirit on all flesh. And the spirit of prophecy now says, Daniel, well, me, I don't talk about myself normally in the, the third person, but since this is a writing, the spirit of prophecy says, Daniel, the Lord's kingdom age messenger, and that's all I am, of Jeremiah's kingdom age new covenant, comes forth as a deliverer exactly like Moses, uh, said in Deuteronomy 18, 18. He said one like him would come forth and I am a writer like him. Just watch my uh, video called The Ever Manifested Everlasting Gospel of Revelation 14. It sounds exactly like Moses and I am a covenant giver just like Moses for the messenger of Malachi 3, 1 is the covenant messenger. It says so in that verse. John the Beloved, or John the Baptist, rather, never gave a covenant message. So it's, it's time. It's time, people. And uh, it's time to keep our love alive. And the spirit of prophecy now, now, now says, let me skip on down here and adjust my screen, because I'm all tucked in under my blankie. And me and Mickey and Minnie, we're all really nice and toasty. So let God's love be the blanket that covers over you and let faith in love that always wins uh, arise and know that he is the victor of victors who will save the day by, by his love exactly as it is foretold. And um, so he'll be restoring all things as, as Jesus uh, uh, predicted in Matthew 17, 11, through his word, self-interpreting his own word with no additions. That's what it's always been about. So be now lion brave hearted. And the lion does roar for days of universal peace and brotherly love are just ahead and Eden is ahead of us due to the Lord's living word that shall transform all that's been into the awaited season of love from Isaiah 11, when all the world shall make it their job to know our giver of fresh hope for the nations. And my videos come from a little book. And I say a little because it's like five, 6,000 pages long. I got a lot of material. I, I'm Elijah, the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who arises in the latter days to embrace his destiny as and it is the manifested vision of Habakkuk 2. Yea, though my, <laughs> I, yea, though I've been transgressed by wine and my soul is not upright because I smoke a little bud here in uh, uh, Amsterdam North in Canada. It's legal in Windsor, Ontario. I'm a Detroiter actually originally, but uh, I live in Camden now. Uh, and Revelation 10 predicted this as well, that uh, his word would be unveiling his own secret, the mystery of Revelation 10-7, that was foretold to be over in the last days since the seventh trumpet of the book of Revelation has sounded off first, because in the kingdom of God the first are last and last are first. Woe unto those ignoring the victor of ages, our beloved love, who sends forth his message of his love by the arrow of uh, Isaiah 49-8. And I am that arrow, and he is the rider of the white horse, and he carries a longbow just for me. I know. <laughs> but one thing's for sure. Uh, it's time for justice of Re Revelation 6. 
So let the wise see that Christ has always been one uh, good white horseman uh, destined to, to come and bring uh, multitudes away from the edge of oblivion and an early death, exactly as it was foretold in Revelation 6. But the spirit of prophecy now discloses that Christ, Elijah's servant of Isaiah 49, 2, was made into his sharpest arrow as foretold. And then he hid me in his quiver. Uh, and John, the beloved pictured that divine rider of the white horse, as fated to go forth as um, as the Lamb Spirit of Christ goes ahead of him. And I bring forth the sickle of Amos 9, and the days where the sower has overtaken the reaper. The mystery is done, and it's time to put away the butter knives. It's time to put away the sword of the Spirit. You cannot use the sword of the Spirit in the harvest. For the harvest, you must have the sickle of God, which is the word of Revelation 14. If you don't believe me, you do not believe the Bible. True story. So since this Betty by, Betty by time story is of love, we got to celebrate that his love has gone before him and has gone past all religion and or lack thereof. Nothing has stopped his love for, from those who have their love light on who have been born again. And those who do not have their love light on must be born, born again. They must become as little children. Let their love light flame on. For those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Those words are literal. And Buddhist love, Islamic love, alcoholics like me love, prostitutes love a lot. <laughs> Everybody loves <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But you get it. I'm making a joke. But the, the, the deadly spiritual weapon that now comes, people can't hardly agree about anything, and that's why it comes. Uh, and right now something incredible has unexpectedly happened, people. It turns out that the words New Covenant finally settles all the arguments over all spirituality because only now have the correct Bible codes of uh, the secretive prophecy finally been exposed at the loving roars uh, command of the Lion of Zion as he roars out of Jerusalem unto his pride. The Lamb was worthy to unseal his word, exactly as Daniel 12 foretold. For God spoke to the original Daniel. He says, Daniel, my word is closed until the time of the end. Go your way. Stand in the house of the prophets and await your destiny as you arise in the latter days, Daniel 12, 13, to embrace your destiny. And the destiny is to tell people that the Lord of love has unsealed his word and his word flows again anew. And the kingdom age covenant has been given to intellectually begin the kingdom age. So that makes it a really, really happy story time. And it makes me so glad. For to rid the world of its most evil kinds of racism, the Lamb has opened the holy seals, which have released the three horsemen of doom. 5.7 billion would die by the pale horsemen in that reality. Thank God we're, there's two futures in the Bible. We are going to the latter-day peace of Isaiah 2 in the latter days. No matter what translation you look, in the latter days, man will beat their swords into plowshares, and the wheat will all come with me, and the tares where it will stay behind in their unrestored religion that uh, condemns their brother. Billions of people would die, people, exactly as it's prophesied. So it's time to avert that and stop that and cut these days short. That's why even Morg Official, who is the lawless one that would die by a sword in Revelation 13, 13, and he's got the 666 on the wall right behind him, who dies by a sword anymore, but that will be cut short, and he shall never ascend 
we are going towards the peace because you can't have the peace of Isaiah 2 and have the uh, Armageddon of Zechariah 6, totally opposite futures. So we're just at a choice. We can, we can uh, if we pay attention to the divine word of the white horseman of, of Revelation 6, it will be changed. And that special rider is our Lord of love. And Christ goes before the other evil horses, uh, not to kill anyone, <laughs> but to spiritually kill off the accursed closed-mindedness of multitudes during the last harvest of love, that uh, the most uh, royal rider of the white horse, who is, he's clothed, clothed in the whitest Shekinah glory of his very own celebrated honor. But our Lord of all flesh would be a liar if he didn't keep his promise for these latter days to Israel, since he swore to them that he would be the loving God of them in the end days over all of Israel's families and all flesh as he now declares. They've always been in good standing, but it's been hidden and there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. That is the mystery of God. And according to Paul, the mystery that has been concealed until till now, the mystery is over and all religion is obsolete as Paul foretold in the book of Hebrews 8. So it's time to arise in love and Mickey and Minnie are here with me and they've been keeping me really good company. Say, hi, say bye Mickey. Say bye Minnie. Uh, Minnie's there too. So down comes the curtains. That's what happens when you do bedtime stories underneath your covers. It falls on your head. But don't let hate fall on your head. Don't let uh, animosity. Uh, don't be the proud and the arrogant who are going to have days burning as an oven with their religion going ballistic in their brain because these are days of desolate heritage being revealed. All of mankind has had desolate heritages. Isaiah 49, 8 foretold that accurately. Because love has always been misdefined. God's love has been not understood. And that has made all the difference. It created a false God of love with condemnation in his mouth when never ex none ever existed. And it created a shadow world. A world of spookiness. A world of mistrust. A world where no one would wants to listen to anyone. Because if they're a false prophet and I believe I might go to hell. Praise the Lord. He closes hell now. By the revelation of the kingdom age covenant, he says, I forgive your iniquity and I shall remember it no more. And that means that Satan is fired as the uh, uh, accuser of the brethren. And Mickey says, yay, this was a good bedtime story. Satan fired is good in hell forever and ever. Yay, come on back now. Can you live with that? Can you? Can you live with the knowledge that God is giving us a new start because he is love, and we are his beloved. Love you. Bye now.